In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use 3D scan data within SketchUp. If you have a SketchUp Studio subscription, you are automatically entitled to use or have Trimble Scan Essentials. So to open scan data, we can click on the open button here. And we can import different file formats like E57, uh, it's quite common. Um, TZF uh, files like that and I've already got a project file that I've already saved so I'm just going to hit open on that and it's just going to load the data so once you open the scan data you can look around just like you would normally look around in SketchUp uh, we can do a few things to make the data stand out a little bit better so under the settings here We'll just drag out the dialog. I'm just going to increase the, the point cloud size and I just find that makes it a little bit easier to work with. Uh, you can do things like colorize it if you um, you want to just see it a little bit differently and that can also be quite useful for moving the, the object. So next I'm going to move my scan data onto the axis. Um, I could move the axis onto the scan data, but um, for this example, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to grab some data in the bottom left corner here and move the whole scan on top of the origin. So now looking at the scan data, I just want to see if it's aligned properly. So if I change my view and I look down the, the wall, I just want to see if it's in line, which it looks like it's done a pretty good job. Okay. The next step is um, I could, well, with SketchUp 2024, I can now extract the contours of the ground. So if I go and click on Create Mesh, I can change my uh, mesh cell size so that's just the um, like the grid size do I want it to fit the cloud or do I want to just make a rectangular shape um, so this may take a little bit of time if I'm using quite high res detail so just for the demo sake I'm just going to leave it actually at 1000 and create the mesh and it goes ahead and just finds the ground data in the scan and automatically creates a uh, contoured surface. So if I just turn off the visibility of the scan, you can see it's created that mesh detail for the ground. If we come over to here and turn off the scan, you can kind of see the shape of the cul-de-sac there. So now I'm going to start 3D modeling over top of the scan data. So I'm going to click on my rectangle tool. And if I turn on this option here, always pick on the point cloud first, I can then go and create a rectangle on this shape. So I can also use my arrows on my keyboard to lock certain planes. So I've just locked the red plane. And I'm just going to grab up in the top right, top left corner of this wall and go down down to the ground. So next I can just change my axis. So I'm going to use the left arrow and I might switch over to this one here now because I want to carry on where I left off with the scan data. So with my, my data that I drew. And with the right view, I should be able to draw up here. We'll take it to there. Then I can select this edge and I can move that up. And we'll just pick on the point cloud here. So I'm using the bottom of the, the gutter there to snap to. And next I'm just going to um, carry on drawing. I can erase that out. So 
So let's just have a look at what we've got. got. That's looking pretty good. And then we'll just draw around the back here till it kind of meets this point cloud here. It's not quite locking to that, so I might just turn off um, under the outline of the terrain just so it doesn't get caught up on that. And then we go along here. And how I'm locking on axis is I'm just drawing along an axis, holding shift, and it, the, the line goes thicker. And then I can snap to the point cloud there. And this is a little bit more tricky, so I might go from, looks like about there, up to here. So it's really simple to draw something with scan essentials. Um, and just being able to like snap on to the point cloud data. So this actually goes a little bit higher because there's, you know, a flash in there. But maybe we'll just go, yeah, now it does go on a bit of an angle there. We might go up past the gutter. Actually, because we can always put a gutter on afterwards. Yeah, we could probably take that out and then draw across there like that. And we also need to draw along here. And we should be able to match the height over here. Should be the same. And we'll draw underneath here. Voila. Okay, so we just finish off the rest of the wall here. So this is, it just actually goes straight to the end, but it's just a change of plating there. Now is this the same height? No, it's tilt slab here. So we're gonna go a little bit higher. And then from here, we'll go up. And maybe just slide that to the left a little bit. And obviously that's a little bit low at that point because yeah, there's a flashing, flashing along there like that. So we can maybe just draw along like that, add that flashing. And now we can look at like adding that gutter. And go like that. Um, Okay. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm not going to go too much into too much detail. Um, we're get, just getting a good idea of just how to use the scan data. And it kind of stops about there. And then again, a change in cladding. Okay, so we might just do a couple of um, little doors here just to kind of make the building 
stand out. And then just a bigger opening here. If I ever want to match the height of something, I, I could draw it first and then just like move it up. And then I'm just going to copy that over to here. And then any other windows, I could easily just, just do like a basic rectangle to represent those. And again, I'm just doing this roughly just to demonstrate how it works. So just purely using the line tool and rectangle tool at this point. Um, so let's turn back on our terrain. Let's turn off the look of our scan data. And within mere minutes, we've got the 3D shape. So of course, we can add much more detail, um, window joinery and things like that. But for example, if you just only needed the, the boundary of the building, maybe you're uh, into scaffolding and you just want to design some scaffolding around the building, this is all you would need to do to design that scaffolding. So hopefully this has given you a brief overview of how Scan Essentials works. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to show you that if you wanted to check the accuracy of how well you've 3D modeled, um, we can go over down here and we can have a look for inspection and then you can go inspect color map. Ah, I also probably need to turn on the, the scan data. And you can see here, it just gives you some green uh, points to show you how well it's fitted. So maybe I'll just set my accuracy a little bit greater. And you can see um, within 50 millimeters, I'm getting green in a lot of areas, but maybe I could do a little bit better in some others. So maybe I just go ahead and move that surface a bit more until it's I see a bit more green information. So it's pretty nice that you can basically inspect your model as you are 3D modeling.